I always say to people is, you know, sometimes we don't know how to express to somebody who may be dying or something else has happened to them. So just give someone a thumbs up, a heart or a mm. like, because our voices are running away from somebody else's caring. <laughs>
and then somebody comes and gives us an attitude adjustment and Brendan then stopped association with his uh, dickhead mates so it became very authentic uh, off the drugs and um, life went um, well there for a while but uh, on, that, on that day in 1986 um, went out with some mates and uh, then unfortunately at 22 um, he broke his back. Um, can you remember the accident? Very well. Um, like just a few days beforehand, I was in Tasmania on a working holiday. I was there for three days. Had about six hours sleep. Now I was 22, was out having fun. Uh, then came back to Mornington where I was living. I was out with my sister and friends at uh, you know, Leggy's Disco, 21st Disco. Oh, the old Leggy's. I think Dermy used to go there a lot. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> some great times. Uh, with our revolving floor. Against, or and stuff, Vic's so. hamburger shop next door. Yeah, remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Anybody grew up with Frank's then <laughs> at the 21st Century Dance Club. Vic's, yeah. weren't they the best hamburgers? Oh. Awesome. Uh, nice, oh. dripping fat. Anyway, <laughs> so I was there with my sister and friends, and I was a Desio driver. I had a quick gym burn and coke, so um, dropped those guys off at home. So I was lucky I was by myself. So I was coming down Stumpy uh, and Tyre Road, that's where I had my accident, and just uh, wandered down the window, trying to suck the cold air and to wake yourself up, and just drifted off to sleep. And um, uh, apparently I was doing over 140 k's, between 140 and 160 k's, and clipped a lamppost, cart with the car in the hand, then got thrown out through the windscreen. You may see this faint scar going across my eye, I almost lost my eye, massive scars on my head. Broke my back completely around belly button level, incomplete break of my neck, uh, so I was lucky I wasn't a quad. Um, so um, After the break, Brandy, we might talk um, about after that uh, near fatal accident where yeah, you woke yeah. up. Definitely. And after you receive the uh, the news that you're going to be stuck in this uh, wheelchair mm. for the rest of your life. But uh, what a uh, heroic and courageous man, Brendan Stroud, you know. Um, some great lessons about being real and uh, mentally tough. We'll be back very shortly. Brendan Strout's on the cage. I like this man. Uh, we both grew up down Frankston way many, many years ago, and I used to see him around the pubs. Um, you know, but I like about this bloke, he's real. There's so many people with social masks and um, judgmental people, but, um, you know, he's authentic. Um, to sum it up, um, his um, uh, mum and dad split up, and uh, when he was nine, got onto drugs when he was 13, started um, fighting in the streets, uh, knocking off a few cars, ended up at um, Tirana, boys' home. Uh, Pentridge, um, and then uh, decided to clean up his life where a magistrate said you'll get five years jail next time. Uh, and then in 86, at the age of 22, had an accident, uh, coming home, uh, tiredness, and uh, woke up where? Uh, I woke up in uh, the Austin Hospital, uh, in one of the wards there, and I was drifting in and out of coma and stuff like that. And uh, um, so I sort of build up from there, have going through rehab. I was in hospital. But no, hospital. no, this is important. You wake up and uh, you think, fuck, what happened? Yeah, pretty and much. And does the doctor then come up to you and say, look, I've got to tell you some bad news? Yeah, he turned around and said, listen, I don't remember the doctors ever saying, I'm not going to walk again. He yeah. said, your spinal cord's crushed. Yeah. Uh, and my positive, stupid attitude is, yeah. well, can't you take it out and iron it? So um, <laughs> and obviously you don't take out vital organs and put yeah. it back into somebody. So... I sort of still had a positive attitude and sort of not worrying about it too much and sort of get on with life, but it's a huge... How I was, long in hospital? I was in hospital approximately about six months, so um, so I was lucky I didn't have a complete break of my neck and wasn't a quadriplegic, and uh, obviously there's a lot of people out there who, who are quadriplegic and suffering from that, so being a paraplegic around the belly button level and... Um, paraplegic, so then so then they confirmed it, hey, you won't be able to walk. not going to walk again, uh, you're going to have to do this and that and try and do that. And Change your mind, life. as uh, a young bloke, 22, ready my, and... My mental status was just plummeting. Uh, in, outside of me, you could see a wall of just comedy being positive, so, but inside I was just... Yeah, you know, isn't that amazing, folks? We, you know, we always expect life to be all the same, but uh, it's so important to live with uncertainty, and, you know, because uh, at 22 then, uh, all of a sudden he comes home with a wheelchair, you know, you can't visit your mates, can't do all that sort of stuff, but he said 12 months after being confined to the wheelchair, he just thought, fuck it, um, wanted to take his life and uh, overdosed on lots and lots of mm. pills, yeah? Yeah, I took over 300 pills that I had, like Backlund Valium and a whole lot of other Just things. couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, just couldn't cope with it. There was, I had no purpose to breathe or anything like that. So all the sports stuff I did before my accident, besides the trouble, 
I didn't know what was around for people with disabilities at that stage. So I had, for me, I had no purpose to breathe. So what could I do? So did, I thought, did mates no. come around and say, oh, you know, this no, and that? No, I lost probably 98% of the people that I was sort of mucking around They just with. stay away. Yeah, because you know, I couldn't do the stuff that I used to be for and protect people or whatever. Um, so I just lost those. The word authentic people. So when you took all those pills, um, who found you? Uh, my flatmate was supposed to be away on holidays and he came back and you forgot something. I was comatosed on the floor. So uh, I ended up obviously at the Frankston ICU and I was there in a coma uh, for about three and a half weeks, I think. So I was in and out of consciousness as well. A couple of funny stories there, but I know we haven't got time to go through that. Then wake up on the floor in a mattress in a psychiatric unit at Mont Park um, Hospital there and spent a little bit of time there to obviously get myself back in order and um, got out of there and uh, sort of started to get myself back together. Had to go to the Austin for some uh, other treatments and things like that. And, and this is amazing for people watching who are going through some very difficult times. Uh, so Brendan wanted to take his life. He said, I just don't want to be confined to this wheelchair. And uh, he then meets somebody and uh, finds out sport. He then um, mm. joins um, Basketball Australia and uh, tennis and uh, to a, a national level. Can you so netball, wheelchair netball was the first board I discovered. So that was in the quadrangle of the Austin Hospital. So I thought, oh, it's a sport. I would actually really like to try this. So I hopped in the, uh, the sports chairs they had there. So I jumped in playing wheelchair netball. Uh, not in a netball school for you, Michael, so, no, but um, started pushing around that. So I played wheelchair netball for about three to four years and found out there was wheelchair basketball. So I thought, yeah, that's a lot more adrenaline based for me. Uh, played that, got into the Victorian team for almost straight away, then got into the Australian B team a couple of years later and um, then progressed into an Australian representative in the main team going to Japan and UK and all sort of things. This is amazing. So, uh, so wheelchair it, tennis as well. So it was sport that, uh, that saved your sport life? Sport gave me that purpose to breathe again. As I was saying earlier, I needed, I didn't have anything, no purpose to live, no purpose to breathe. I'm like, what am I going to do? So, uh, so sport was my passion, and we hear this all the time that sport saves Amazing. people. We hear athletes that have got into even grassroots stuff that's given. And them you would have met a great athlete. bunch of people. How many years did that last for you? Your um, I'm still playing sport now. Well, not at the moment. But, um, so, which, but, but isn't it amazing? Like we we get through that. Um, and, and, and then life punches on their face. And they were, they, they, I remember you said there was a time when a whole bunch of things happened. Uh, a yeah. whole bunch of people died. Passed away, sadly. Uh, like the first one was probably the hardest as well. It was my seven year old nephew. He's a nephew I helped raise for the first few years of his life as well. And he got off a school bus outside his mum's place where he died in an unworthy, roadworthy car, distracted driver speeding. And he hit him. He, uh, he got taken to the Royal Children's Hospital and died in front of us. This was quite some time God ago. God bless him. And not long after that, mum, uh, sadly, she was the distracted driver, pulled out into a freeway, semi trailer daughter, 100 k's, killed her instantly. And oh, so mum's gone, God so bless mum, her. Yeah, so mum's gone, sadly, too. And not long after How that... How long ago was when, when mum passed? Oh, this is over 10 years ago now. So, oh. um, so not long after that, my stepfather, who was my mum's husband then, he uh, just couldn't handle it. And, his own life and stuff as well and i've had other people i've lost um on the road Jeez, and stuff it, as well so. there's there's so many challenges but you would have been a great inspiration um look we'll have a quick break and we'll find out uh, i want to get some inspiration for you you know from yeah. all those people suffering yeah. um we'll be back very shortly Thank you very much for watching. I'm Michael Kazilny. Brendan's certainly gone through his fair share of uh, tough times. And, um, and and then to top it all off, 12 months ago, um, he got diagnosed with cancer. And they said he's got 6 to 12 months to live. How come you're still here? Uh, still smiling. Uh, well, it's an average time limit they gave me. So um, what, carcinoma, what you, you uh, squalous cell carcinoma is the name oh of the cancer we know, normally know that as a skin cancer but when it's in the urethra it's quite rare and it's sad so it's Brandon, how did that so. come about you, you what why did you you went to i was supposed to go to the doctor so all the time. yeah what happened was 2019 i was playing wheelchair aussie rules for collingwood and uh i was bleeding profusely and being one of those tough males you know it's not falling off yet so i'm not going to worry about it so even though i was bleeding profusely i thought it was just indwelling catheter trauma 
Uh, so I didn't worry about it, but there's a lot of blood and stuff like that. So it wasn't until I met my current partner who said, who's an ICU nurse, says, Brendan, you really got to do something about this. And this was February uh, last year. And uh, so we went to a urologist and uh, he said, no, we're going to have to do a cystoscopy. Uh, they did a biopsy at the same time. And that's when we found out I had cancer and um, what type of cancer it was. So two weeks later, on, uh, I'm in the Olivia newton John Centre having on a slab, a 13 and a half hour operation, having seven and a half litres of blood and plasma pumped through me. and. Uh, getting bits and pieces cut out of me. My oh my bladder's, God, Brendan. My blood is gone. Oh my God, are you dying? Uh, sadly, yeah. Uh, are you? Um, yeah, we don't know. Wait. How long's a piece of string? We don't know. Um, so what they've told me is there's Wait. an average time. But I, we look at averages of, okay, if I was older, had other ailments, I'd probably live but to that average if, time. If people said to you, Brendan, how long? Uh, I well, I only can go by what the doctors tell me. And there is a rough guess Hello. as an average, so around 12 to 18 months. So, um, Bullshit. Yeah, so. And, and you, when I spoke to you on Friday, you said, Michael, I'd love to give you an update. You were the yeah. most positive bloke. He was the most positive bloke I spoke to mm. um, all week. I was and still having my down the driveway, time, He was rolling his um, wheelchair, and he's still... Ha What's the formula to, to, to you know, to to keep such a positive mind? Oh, I think all the trauma that I've been through, I've learnt, the times that I've gotten out of each one, I've become, I guess, more positive. And I've learnt that the positive person I am, obviously I have a lot of humour and stuff I use with that as well. So, um, as I said, I was listening to somebody else that you've interviewed before and they were talking about people born with positives or negatives. Yeah. And, and it's about, I guess, enriching yourself with that as well and around people with you. and learning from the hard times to build up resilience you are that. this guy's a beautiful human being i love him like a brother you know <laughs> now he's telling me he's gonna die any you know any month well but we hope not so we hope not but i yeah. reckon you know some people get diagnosed and they outlive us all through a positive mm. mental attitude you know and and there's been people who, through laughing videos who've um who've got better so um yeah. this is quite amazing so um people going through um there was one more difficult time I wanted to talk to you about. You know, you said this on the phone. Your your young son is uh, wants to uh, Miles. Yeah, Miles. Um, Miles was born uh, Amelia. Yeah, um, and he's decided that uh, he's felt uh, majority of his life that uh, that's not who he was. So um, so he's transitioning into Miles now, and, hey. and that's a hard time obviously yeah. for Miles. And obviously he's uh, only sixteen, but um, just but, walking through that. So. So lucky because he's got such a supportive hmm. father. And that's know. important for so anybody supportive. going through this with their kids and stuff like that. And, it's and so them. important, folks, not to judge people, you know. We're such a judgmental lot, you know. There's far too many critics out there, but we should be good finders and, um, you know, see the good and, and, and be kind to each other. Isn't that right, Brendan? Exactly, yeah. And learning to listen to it. I do a blog of when I'm going through my treatments and stuff. Like, chemo didn't work for me. That's why I've got my hair back, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm on immunotherapy now, but I do blogs every time I'm having treatment. And one of the things I always say to people is, and sometimes we don't know how to express to somebody who may be dying or something else has happened to them. So just give someone a thumbs up, a heart or a mm. like, because our voices are running away from somebody else's caring heart. And getting that person who's struggled to move forward, it may be a heart, it may be a like to help them get through this and maybe they'll put one day on your show talking about it but mm. that person they listen to one of their stories that that one little thing that may resonate to them to help them step forward brendan Stroud, it, your story really inspires me and, and, and i'm sure many others and um it just makes us realize that uh, you know some of the stuff the bullshit we go through and worry about um is absolutely not worth worrying about is it no it's not it's about obviously learning to accept and breathe uh, what's going on with yeah. your life and uh, hopefully that people can get through it and uh, hopefully that people can reach out and get health because we get into those dark times as you probably know that we don't see other things around us all we are is here and now in that dark spot and it's really hard to reach out to a mental health plan or something to reach out because we're in that darkness we need something to give us that little kick or hard kick to move forward brendan i want to ask you this question at 13 you um you, your life was uh, shit you want to end your life again at uh, 23 after being stuck in a wheelchair you want to end your life um what's your thought about death now <sighs> it's it's a different ball game because the times that we're of wanted to end my own life now something is taking that out of control and wants to kill me 
Um, so I'm obviously having ups and downs to try and you, know, you plan for the best, uh, uh, but you've got to plan for the worst and hope for the best, as they say. So uh, the mental side of it is still hard to grasp with, okay, I've got to put this in place, put this in place, because I don't know when I'm going to die, if I'm going to die. And mm. So hopefully something comes around the corner and says, no, we're not done with you. Look, I think God is going to, uh, you know, you've always uh, been a very spiritual person. I, I think God will get you through. Mm. But if I went, to, just to finish off, if I went to your funeral, you went to mine. If I went to yours, how would you, uh, would love to be remembered? Probably a lot of Seinfeld stuff. I'm a nut about Seinfeld, so, uh, it, you know, I'd like somebody to just quote a lot of Seinfeld quotes to me uh, or uh, to the audience and stuff because yeah, that's who I am. And, yeah. Brendan, I want to respect you. You're going to be around for a long time. And thank, uh, you. thank you very much for watching, everybody. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Here's a true example. Have a great weekend.